So you subtract m total g y bottom from both sides and and you can cancel the m totals. Then divide by one half, which is the same as multiplying by two on both sides. And then square root. So now that we have this one solved for VAC, we plug in what we had before, which is looking up above, MB, VI, etc. So we plug that in for VAC. And, and now we can solve for VI. So multiply both sides by, well, multiply and divide by this. Uh, whatever verb you want to call it, you get rid of that fraction. And if you want to break that up into two steps, you can. And I'll have space to write it up there, so I'm going to write it down below. And there you have it. We have an equation for V initial given the heights and the masses, which we know. So on the second page, you will see that you're given some numbers. You're given these three values. I'm going to go ahead and write this uncertainty as a percentage. That would be 10%. So given these pieces of information, you're asked to find the initial speed of the ball, which you have that equation. It's written up here. You're asked to find V after collision. And that that you may remember we have from up here. This equation gives you V after collision once you know V initial. So you have that equation. And for KE initial, you simply use 1 half MV squared. So what is the M? The V is V initial because we're talking about KE initial. The M is the mass of the ball because at the very beginning of the situation, the ball is moving at some velocity VI and it has not yet hit the catcher. So it, all of the mass that we care about is just this because it hasn't interacted yet with the catcher. So that's why I use M ball. And KE after collision is again, one half MV squared, but now, for the mass, you use the total mass because the ball is in the catcher and they're moving together. And the velocity is the velocity just after the collision, which, to be specific, this is the after the collision but before it starts rising. M total, by the way, is simply the mass of the ball plus the mass of the catcher. So, regarding uncertainty, the nice thing about this lab is only one of the numbers actually has an uncertainty. Looking at the V initial equation, you're plugging in delta y. Oh, what is delta y, by the way? Y, delta y is simply y top minus y bottom. And so, for this equation, you might say, oh, well, I don't have y top minus y bottom. I have this g factor. And you can actually factor out the g like this. You can see I simply wrote this part of the equation again, but with the g out in front, factored out. And so now you have y top minus y bottom, so this is 2g delta y which I'm going to now erase all of this and rewrite it more cleanly. So our new equation for V initial is 2G delta Y, with the delta Y given right here. 2G delta Y times MB plus MC over MB, I mean. Of course, this whole thing, to be clear. So as far as the uncertainty, you have what is happening to delta Y. It's being square rooted, and... Other than that, just multiplied by numbers that have no uncertainty. So 
for v initial, you're going to have some number represented by these squigglies plus or minus 5% because that would be half of 10%, which is the result of the square rooting of delta y. And of course, you can convert that back to an absolute uncertainty. The second value, v after collision, will have an uncertainty of 5% also because it's just perfect numbers multiplied by v initial. Your ke initial will have a percent uncertainty of 10% because you're squaring v initial. And ke after collision will similarly have a 10% uncertainty because you're squaring v after collision.